Hey everybody, sorry this video took so long to make. Things have been very busy. This is part two of our paper character, how to make them flip series. We'll be making what you see on the left there, where we have our character. We'll be adding animations incorporated with the flip, as well as a new face up value, similar to the Paper Mario of the N64. And it is easier than you might think to add. We'll be using the code that we did in part one. So ooh, let's jump into it. We'll be going off of the end of the first video. So if you do not have the code or the files, no worries. You can click one of the links below or if YouTube lets me put a link on the video itself to go check out the first video. And there should be a link there as well to download both the script and the scene file that we worked on in part one. So the biggest change that we're going to be adding is the ability to face up, which is going to take a little bit of prep. I think the most amount of work is probably going to come from the animated sprite controlled via animations. So to start, you're going to want to know what animations you want. So we have idle, jump. We're going to focus on two though so we're going to focus on idle and run so you'll want to import your frames set up your animation make it face one direction in this case we face right because we're using uh face right as a check and it's just easier i keep clicking on 2d now for the second part since we're focusing on up, what you also want to do is make your up face sprites. They don't have to be on an angle. I'm just kind of following the style of Paper Mario. Again, there's a bunch of different ways to probably do this. I found that simply having my animations with the underscore up to be the easiest. And I will show you why when we start getting into the code. So once that's all set up, let's hop back into scripts. So this is the script we ended on. This is our flipping, our face right. All of this stuff is mainly going to stay the same. We're just going to be adding to it to accommodate for up. So to start, let's add the face up. So we got var face up, and this will also be a bool equal false. Since we're going to be starting facing right. Okay. And since now we do have animations, what we'll want to do, or what I usually do, is I do a ready. And in that ready, I usually set the first animation I want to play, or like, I guess the default. So in this case, it would be idle. Um, you can also just click on your animation. So in your animated sprite, you click on your animation that you want to start, and you can just click here for autoplay. So this typing this and doing this is the same thing i just do both just in case so now we're going to build our animation getter system and the way we're going to be doing it is we're going to be first grabbing the animation name so idle run jump and then what we're going to be doing is creating a suffix so that will be the underscore up or if we just want the side one, it'll be blank. If that sounds confusing, I totally understand. I promise I will explain as we go. So we'll start with getting the animation name. So var new animation. And we want this to be a string. For now, we'll make it equal to idle because that's the one we want to start with. And then creating the suffix I mentioned before. It'll be var new suffix, also string. And this, I think, will just leave blank. So if you just do a quote, it should, it should wrap it. You don't have to put a space or anything. Just leave it blank. And I will explain that when we start grabbing the animation names. Okay. Uh, if we go down here, let's say. So... We already have our horizontal. Now we need to get our up and down or vertical input from input dir. Basically what we want to do is we want to get, we want to check. We want to check if horizontal 
input dir is more than vertical. So we start typing if input dir dot x, right? If horizontal is greater than input dot, whoops, dir dot y. Uh, do this else. So if we're moving more, more horizontal, we want our face up to equal false, right? If we're moving more left and right, then we are up and down. We want it, we want to not be facing up else face up, right? Okay. Um, so the variables are being set but they don't currently do anything. So now we actually need to start on the animations. At this point, we're not calling any animation other than idle. So we're going to take some time to set up the animations and get walking working. This next part can be different depending on your project setup, but I'm just going to show you my way of doing it and you can use it as you will. Since we're using a character body, we're going to use some built-in functions. Uh, namely, if is on floor. So if our character is on the ground, um, we're going to do, let's see. So I call it new animation. So we're going to grab our new animation string. And we're going to check if input dir uh, does not equal vector two dot zero. Pass, and then we'll do else and pass. So if we're moving, if there is input, we want to set the new animation, this variable. We want to set it to run. You'll have to look into your animation. So this is the animation we want. So we set it to run. If instead we aren't moving, we want to set it to idle. What we can add right now is our face up check. So we're getting the animation, but we also made these up variants, right? So that's what we're going to access next. And to do that, we're going to say if face up, then we want to grab our new suffix variable equal underscore up or whatever you have put at the end. So we're grabbing this part of our animation. This is why I mentioned to set it up this way. Okay. And then at the end of all of this, we want to do sprite. Oops. Dot play. And we want to build the animation. So We'll get new animation because we've set it to either run or idle. So that's these values. Plus uh, our suffix. So new suffix. So what will end up happening is let's say we're moving. The new animation will be run. So it'll say, okay play run and if we're facing up it'll also append underscore up so the new animation the whole animation that it's looking for will be run underscore up which will be this one if we're not facing up we've already set new suffix to nothing which means at the end of it it'll say run plus nothing which will end up being this animation right so that's why you also want to make sure you don't have spaces um, up here, because otherwise it'll be looking for a run space, which does not exist. If you've been testing as we go, you will probably notice there's some issues, right? It's, uh, we got our up animation, but it's kind of wonky, right? Let's fix that. So we need to build a system kind of similar to our horizontal, right? If you remember from the first part, we did an elif instead of an else so that uh, when we are not moving left or right, nothing happens and it fixes the whole uh, snapping to, I believe it was right, 
either right or left. So now we need to do that for up. So if we go into here and we do if uh, input dir dot y, uh, I believe less than, whoops, all right, less than 0, 0.0. Then we want to do face up and then we want to do l if, not else, l if input dir dot y is greater than 0, 0. We want to do face up equals false. Okay, now if we go test that, oops, still doesn't work proper. So the issue is in this line. Uh, we actually want to get the absolute. So if you do ABS and then put each of your inputs in the brackets, ABS is absolute, ABS. If you highlight and then do a bracket, so if you look at the docs, if you on Windows, if you control click on ABS, it'll show you this. So returns an absolute value of a variant, blah, blah, blah. Essentially, whatever number is within the bracket, it'll return a positive value. So by putting absolute values here in our checks instead, essentially what that means is if the horizontal input is greater than the vertical input, we don't want to face up. But if we're moving more vertical than we are horizontal, then we want to run this code. And within this code, we want to run our check if we're actually facing up or not. And that should get us our flips and our direction. So if you go left, right, you got your left, right. If you go up, you got your up. And if you hold up and you press right, you're still facing up. But if you just go horizontal, then you will not face up. Similar to Paper Mario. Okay, so a couple things. Uh, biggest one, you will no might have noticed that, oh, it's not playing the run animation. Um, that is because I forgot some things that are specific to the character body. Uh, let's hop into that real quick and then we should be done. Okay, so because we're using character body and we're using is on floor, we will need a couple of things. One is move and slide and two is gravity. We'll start from the top of the script and then work our way down. So if we scroll up, let's give our character some gravity, gravity uh float equals let's say five and then in our physics process we want to apply this so velocity dot y minus equals uh gravity and then if we scroll all the way to the bottom we want to add the move and slide function that should now be it so we have our character, and there we go. So in order for everything to work, you will need the gravity. You will need the is on floor check. I mean, it does really depend on your project, but for this, um, so for say like a platformer of sorts, right? You would want to check on the ground. Anyways, this is it. You've done it. You now have your own paper character with flips and multiple face directions. Um, if you wanted to do more with this, you would essentially iterate on more directional. So you got your face up. Maybe if you want to face down, you do something with this. So if face up is false, you could add, I don't know, a down, a down direction. If you really wanted to, it is up to you. I really hope this helped out. Uh, I, again, sorry that it took so long and sorry if this one is a little more scattered, things have been hectic, but if you did enjoy it, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, if you do have questions or you want more of this, please, uh, leave a comment. I do try to read all of them and I love getting feedback and helping people out. I hope you have a good one and happy devving.